Hey YouTube, XCT here. Last time we got access to the account of Sally O'Connor, which has some interesting Active Directory permissions. Today I'm going to show how we can use this user to exploit Active Directory certificate services, specifically ESC4, to become domain admin. So last time we got access to Sally O'Connor, and to find out which kind of attack paths exist um, regarding certificates, I basically used um, the CertiPy Bloodhound variant here. And if you mark the user as owned, um, you can basically just click through the shortest paths from own principles. And there's nothing for ESC1, nothing for ESC2. But if we go to 4 here, we get exactly the thing that I have open at the moment. So that's one way you can enumerate this. Okay, we see that Sally is in Certificate Managers, and Certificate Managers has full right access to the Shinra code signing template. What can we actually do with that? There's this excellent blog post here, um, certified pre-owned by SpectreOps, which goes over like all the details you need to know about ADCS. And if you scroll down a bit, um, there's a section about ESC4, which is the scenario we're in right now. Let's see. It's basically this part here, right? Since we have right access, we can actively push a misconfiguration. So we can make the template vulnerable to one of the other attacks. Um, specifically, we are going to make it vulnerable to ESC1 and then exploit that. So if we go up here, let's have a look at ESC1. Um, there are a couple of requirements or conditions here that have to be met. But since we can write the template, we can basically um, make it so all the conditions are true. The essential part is that basically you allow a certificate to be used for authentication and you allow to enroll in it. And you also allow that the requester can specify a subject alt name. That's like the important part here. So I can basically request certificate for Sally, but put administrator in the alt name, and it will happily give me a domain administrator um, certificate. And this is exactly what we're going to do. All right, let's have a look at this from the practical side. I'm going to use CertiPy find to just list the Chandra code signing certificate so we can see how this looks like. And this is fairly fast. Let's just open it here. Okay, here we have the Shinra code signing certificate. Um, we can see it's not viable for client authentication. All right. Um, some interesting bit is also this private key flex here. Um, there's one thing here which says use legacy provider. This is pretty interesting. Um, like this is a code signing certificate which basically has specific cryptographic option set. Since we want to override the certificate to some extent, um, we have to be careful about like not messing with these cryptographic options because otherwise the template won't be usable anymore. So we keep that in mind. Um, we can see it's valid for about 100 years. Um, enrollment rights, everyone can enroll and only certificate managers can write. Okay, I also want to show you how this looks from the Windows side. So if you go to the CA options here on the DC, um, obviously as an attacker, you can't see that, but I just want to show you how this looks like. And you manage the certificate templates. You can see the details here, um, the validity here as well. And also these cryptographic options I just mentioned. Um, it's also having the legacy cryptographic service provider here. And also um, these two options are marked and we'll see later on that this is actually um, somewhat important. And if you go to security here, um, basically these are the uh, permissions that basically have to be messed up in order for this to be vulnerable. In this case, it isn't really um, a permission issue, right? It's intended that certificate managers have right access, but you could easily like misconfigure this if you like put right for authenticated users, for example, then you are just in, um, in ESC4 scenarios from a low-privileged user. So that would be bad. Yeah, so, so that's for the cryptographic options here. Let's remember those because um, you will see in a bit that CertiPy actually changes this and this will cause a problem. So before running CertiPy, I actually want to duplicate this template. And this is, again, just for basically learning purposes. And now we have to copy here. Um, I'm doing this so we can compare after the CertiPy changes what actually changed in the certificate to figure out um, what might be a problem. So now let's run the command to actually make it vulnerable. Um, we can use CertiPy template for this. We give it the credentials, we tell it which um, template to affect, and we also wanted to save the old template in case we want to restore it later. And remember the, the uh, main goal in this lab is to 
basically be stealthy. So you definitely want to restore it after you exploited it, because otherwise like other people can exploit it as well. And also um, you might get detected. So let's do that. It says it already changed it. So let's actually have a look in Windows first. First, let's refresh here. All right, you can see already the validity period has changed from 99 to five years. And also, if we look for cryptography, some things have changed here. And this is basically the problem. Um, I was hinting at a bit earlier because changing this um, basically makes it so we can't use the template anymore. And I'll show you how to fix that in a second. Um, otherwise, we can see that the security permissions changed. Now everyone has full control, all authenticated users. Yeah, and also a couple other things, right? The fact is Certipy basically changed this template completely up. Um, so it's basically now usable to authenticate with a subject alt name, um, like for example, like administrator to the domain. Let's also confirm this here by just running the command I did earlier again, Certipy find, right? Okay, so here we have the Shinra code signing certificate. Um, we can see all these things are now true here that weren't before. And we can also see full control again here by authenticated users. Same thing we just saw in um, on the Windows side, right? And it's already telling us that this template is now um, not only vulnerable to ESC4 from Sally, but it's also vulnerable to ESC1, 2, and 3 because we basically made it vulnerable. The only thing left to do is um, a command called certify request but basically just um, is trying to get a certificate um, for our user from the Shinra code signing template, but with an alternative name of administrator. And if this would work, we would basically have a certificate for the admin, which we can use to authenticate to the DC. And you can see that this actually failed. Um, we get cert surf unsupported cert type. And it took me a bit to figure out why this is actually the case. Um, but I already told you, it's because here the cryptographic options got messed up. Before it was on legacy cryptographic service provider and it still wants it to be there. Um, so how can we change this? How is Certipy basically writing these values here? Well, if you go to Certipy commands template.py, um, the source code of um, Certipy, right? Um, you can see this configuration template here. This basically has the options that are being set to the template that it's being changed. And basically one thing we can see is um, PKI default CSPs. Um, this has the Microsoft Enhanced Cryptographic Provider. But um, as we saw in the beginning, it also needs the base cryptographic provider. So that's a thing we want to change. And also there's this private key flex. And if we go back to the output here, let's private key flex. Um, it only has like exportable key here, but we need to give it back the um, option to use the legacy provider, um, right? Because we saw earlier in the output, this is the one it wants. So we have to change this template. So basically I put in this gist here, what we want to change in a template to make it work with the code signing certificate. Um, like I said, we need the uh, Microsoft base cryptographic provider additionally here. So let's just copy that. Also, we want to enable the legacy provider. And if you want to find out how this is actually done, you can always go to like the Microsoft documentation here and you see the private key flag attributes. And if we just go for legacy here, you can see that this bit basically needs to be enabled in order for the legacy provider to be used. And this is also all I'm doing here. This is the original value in the template and I'm just yeah, I'm basically using OR to enable the bit here, right? So this is also a line we want to change like this. And that's basically already everything we have to change. I also added just for documentation sake, how you would change the hash type from SHA-1 to SHA-256, but we don't really have to do that in this case. All right, so we modified the certify source and now we should be able to use all right so we modified the certify source and now we should be able to do it again. So first of all, we want to like make a backup of the backup that we have the original certificate because if we just run the command again we would overwrite the original backup and we don't want that so i'm just going to call that like original.json okay so let's actually now try to change the template again it's the same command as before just with the change template here in the source right um, it 
it's telling us again it worked. And if you go to properties, cryptography, we can now see that it changed actually exactly to the thing we want. Um, we wanted enhanced and base, and we wanted to have the legacy provider here. And it's still on five years and so on, and security is still authenticated users. We can see it's definitely the certified changes. Um, we just modified the cryptographic provider, um, so we can actually request the certificate. So now let's um, actually do the request and hope that it works, right? Same command as before, certified request. And it worked. We got a certificate with administrator at shinra-dev.vl. So why did I show this? Well, I think it's a good example on how um, a tool might fail on the first attempt, but it's actually not that difficult to like find out why it's failing and fixing it. So what's left to do? Well, we got the certificate, so we can now do certify off with the certificate. And this will basically just dump the NDLM hash of the administrator user on the DC. Here we go. And now we can use this hash to authenticate to the DC. For example, we are WinRM or PXXX or whatever you want. And we are actually the domain administrator. So to summarize, we exploited ESC4, which was um, our user had the right access to a template and could completely change it up. And we used Certipy to change it so it can be used for authentication. And also we can put a subject alternate name to get an authentication certificate for a different user. And then we use that to authenticate at administrator to the DC, dump the hash, and then connect with WinRM to the DC. And now we are domain admin. Okay, so this is it for today. Next time we are going to explore an alternative path to DA that involves group managed service accounts and delegation. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.